right, guys, we are in the 2024 Audi Q8 e-tron. This is the Prestige Launch Edition. We're gonna go ahead and give it a quick little launch here so you can see how it performs. You ready? And that is full to the floor. And that's 70. So again, plenty of get up and go. This thing with sport mode enabled, which we were in, has about 490 foot pounds of torque, which moves this 5,700 pound vehicle to 60 in a little over 5.6 seconds. They say 5.5, five, 5.8. Five, five, I've seen different things, but you're talking high fives. Definitely has plenty of get up and go when you want it. And when you don't, it's nice and quiet and refined as you can hear. Welcome back. Honored to have you here. Again, my name is Adam. So if you clicked on this thumbnail, you're probably interested in buying this car for the daily driver category. Now this is the refreshed version of the Q8, right? So they came out with this car originally, I believe in 2019. This has the 114 kilowatt battery pack. This is the prestige launch edition. You can also get this in 106 kilowatt battery pack. Now with the 21 inch wheels, this is estimated range of 285 miles. So it's not gonna be as much as the Model X or the Model Y of the world. However, at 285 miles, it's a pretty darn good daily driver. Now, with this particular package, this is all blacked out with this launch edition trim. You have the grill that's body match. You have these awesome LED matrix headlights. They've restyled this whole front here as well. At night, this lights up with a light bar and it's also the same in the back, kind of like Porsche, right? Where it's just one consistent light across the front and the rear. Looks really good at night. Overall, I think if you're coming from an internal combustion engine SUV, like a previous generation of this car, right, that had an internal combustion engine, I really think that this is probably one of the easiest cars to get into if you're looking to transition from ICE internal combustion engine to an EV. First of all, this looks like an internal combustion car, guys. I mean, tell me on a first impression that this looks like an EV. Nothing tells you, tells you that it is. It looks just like a normal car, which I'm a fan of. And the other thing that I like about this car is it's got the charging ports on both sides. Now, Audi does charge you $1,800. However, this is a really nice feature so if you you know have a garage and they happen to put the 240 on the right wall or the left wall you don't have to worry about where you're gonna plug in your 240 now if you want to fast charge it which is fast charge is 170 kilowatts an hour you have to come over to this side and then you want to go ahead and pull this one down this allows you to fast charge this car now Audi says you can put about 80% into the battery in roughly 30 minutes that's gonna be dependent on the actual charger you're at but it can maintain a high level of charging consistently. Now, one of the other things that I like about this architecture is I believe it has 36 individual battery cells. So if you happen to have a problem with a battery cell, they can actually replace just that cell instead of the entire battery pack, which I do think for longevity wise, this could actually become one of the more reliable vehicles. Now, other things to cover on the exterior here, other than the fact that it looks like a good looking crossover, this has the 21 inch wheels. These are uh, cross contact tires. All season tires these look kind of plasticky but they're not they're uh, they're metal they look good in person you know guys I've had a Tesla Model X P100D since 2019 and eventually we got a Model S the interiors of those cars being the premium version of Tesla's have nothing on this Audi here I gotta be honest in every way it's very Spartan there's no real buttons so there's a few things I'm gonna point out from that perspective number one these seats are worlds better right this has the ten thousand four hundred dollar prestige package these seats are heated, they're cooled, and they're massaging. Very nice texture on them too. They're perforated, they're fully adjustable. You can adjust this, 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 up and down, forwards and back, you know, lumbar, all of that is here. Another thing that I really like about this car that the Tesla doesn't offer anymore is the sunroof. You have a wonderful sunroof, which is excellent for a day like today. The other thing I like about the interior of this car versus a Tesla is you actually have some good physical buttons. You have a physical start-stop button. You have physical AC controls as well. You have nice haptic feedback here on the buttons. 
You have a shifter, which is located here and not here. Shifting is pretty darn easy. That's it, up, down for drive, and P is park. You can get used to this very, very easily. This car does have cruise as well, so it's very easy to get used to driving it. Drives a lot like an internal combustion engine car. And it also has the ability to hold yourself when you're at a stoplight as well. Now, one of the things I really like about this particular engine or this particular vehicle is when you're in reverse, so let me turn it on. This, the camera here, notice you hear that sound. The camera here is full 360. So even after, I don't know how many years Tesla's been out, they still don't have a full 360 camera. Even though they have like, what, 12 cameras around, so I really don't understand why that is. But this camera is gonna make parking a whole lot easier than your Tesla of the world. Also notice all the different you know uses of materials here. You kind of have this suede Alcantara, this nice gray leather with the stitch line, and you have soft plastic up here, nice kind of high-end plastic feeling trim that goes throughout the entire cockpit. Now, you also have three large screens that you're presented with with the driver. So you have your front screen here. This screen right here allows you to do your navigation, right? Change your vehicle settings, music, Bluetooth, all of that. Then down here is all mostly to do with your AC and heating controls. Again, I like that they break it up and it's not all on one screen. This also has the heads up display, which some packages just don't offer this one does have it which is again another nice feature to have I really like the way they've integrated a lot of the sound bars into the car as well and just overall when you're driving this car and you're sitting in the seat it's a nice place to spend time it's $90,000 so it better be but I do think that this kind of gives you that same Audi quality that if you're coming from a previous Audi especially an internal combustion car this one's gonna feel very similar and premium your ability to set the car on cruise control slash autopilot is right here you just push this right here and set and that'll go ahead and set it and then you can go up and down cancel resume and then also your distronic cruise control when we do our point of view drive I'm going to demonstrate that this right here these paddles are where you can actually adjust your regen it's really weird I'm going to demonstrate that on the point of view drive how you constantly have to initiate the regen mode when you want to slow down it only really works well if you're on like a long hill or something otherwise you're probably never going to use it which I think is a miss because you're going to go through your brake pads like a, tr a traditional internal combustion car versus where my Tesla we're at 80,000 miles now and I'm still on my first set of brake pads not bad for a car that has 760 horsepower not a lot of internal combustion cars could do that I'd probably be on my third set of brakes but the last thing to point out if you've got kids or you plan on having a lot of adults in the back I'm six feet tall I've got my seat really, really far back, and I still have about a half an inch here. So this is definitely practical. You also have the ability to have your seat controls heated and cooled back here as well, which is nice. They actually offer you a screen, and this one also has the sunshade. If you got two kids like me, you're gonna have to worry about charging the devices. They give you two USB-Cs in the back here, and then also two USB-Cs in the center there, as well as a 12 volt. So you got plenty of charging options. Another thing that's interesting about this car is you can open the back here by going ahead and kicking down here. I will tell you, this is kind of finicky. When I was at the dealership, it worked. Now it doesn't work, so I don't know. I think you can get used to it. Maybe you have to have the key on you, the key's in the center. I'm not 100% sure. Now back here, you have a nice wide trunk. Obviously, you can see we've got our camera gear, but if you want to lay the seats down, it is literally as easy as pushing a button like that, and they automatically fold down. If you're interested in what the key looks like, Kind of looks like your standard Audi key. It says e-tron on the back, has the panic button here, lock, two clicks here for your rear, and then unlock. All, obviously everything is auto sensing, so when you walk up to the car, it'll automatically unlock for you. Uh, but this is still a nice key, although not as heavy as their old ones. All right, we are driving the Audi Q8 e-tron. Putting it in drive is effortless, so literally one Flick down here on the middle, middle shifter. You can hear very, very, very quiet. Now you do hear this fake audible sound that Audi is piping in through the speakers. I'm not a huge fan of it. I actually prefer Tesla's, which is just kind of normal electric sound, but if you're used to an internal combustion engine, again, this is one of those cars that's gonna make the transition very, very easy. 
Now I just took my foot off of the accelerator pedal and the car coasts like an internal combustion engine. It is absolutely tuned to continue to go down the road versus capture energy, which is called regenerative braking. Now you can turn that on by this right here. So if I go ahead and hit that paddle, you can see here in the left, because it's in dynamic mode, it's going to go ahead and start charging the battery. However, when I take my foot off the accelerator again, it resets. So it's constantly resetting the regenerative mode. I'm not a huge fan of that, I don't really get it. I should be able to turn on regenerative mode and leave it there. I went through the settings earlier today and I could not locate where to keep it on regenerative mode. So there is no one pedal driving in this car currently that I'm aware of. It might be there, but you know, and feel free to call me out in the comments. But when I was looking through the vehicle settings here, I could not find. Again, it's easy to drive, but it sure would be nice just to keep the dynamic engine braking or just the engine braking the regen mode on all the time because it's a really handy feature your brakes are going to last a lot longer you're going to gain a little bit of range back so overall i'd be a big fan of that now driving this vehicle you know guys it just drives like a nice suv you sit up pretty high as you can see it's quiet in here i mean just listen to it we're doing 40 miles an hour butter you can easily have a conversation in here with a couple of adults, you know, so it just drives like a nice luxury interior. You don't hear a lot of road noise. You don't hear a lot of braking or engine noise. The only thing you really hear is that kind of fake audible sound. Now this also does have all of the driver assistance features on. So every time you veer over to the lane, it kind of wants to jerk you back. It's also helping me with stop and start as far as distance control. I can see here as that car approaches, it actually starts to slow down a little bit. So you can disable these features, but this one has all of the assistance features built into it. They're nice to have. Um, I'm gonna take this on the highway. I'm gonna demonstrate cruise control. Now you can set it. Like I just turned on cruise control. So now it is gonna lane steer on or off the highway. Is it as good as Tesla though? It's not. Uh, especially on some of these tighter turns. But it, you can see right now, it's driving itself no problem, keeping in traffic, keeping it in the lane. So that's a nice feature to have, you know, on a highway of the world, you're gonna definitely enjoy it. You know, guys, driving on these uh, back roads now, the car definitely feels like a heavy car, uh, but it drives really nice, uh, it does. Uh, I like the, they say they tightened up the suspension a little bit. They tightened up the steering ratio a smidge. Like it definitely feels like a, a good planted SUV, uh, but heavy, you know? I mean, you have all that 114 kilowatt battery pack and when you load up into a turn, you do really feel that, uh, but it's still, it's nice. You're gonna enjoy driving the car, uh, but just keep in mind, it's not like most other EVs of the world. You know, when you take your foot off a of Rivian or you take your foot off of a Tesla, or you take your foot off of well, the Volvo even, I mean, the you know, the XC40 we did, they all regenerate. This one does not do that. So it copes with the best of the internal combustion engine cars out there. And then again, that, that's, that's fine and all, it just takes a little bit of getting used to. And when you stomp on the fuel or the accelerator pedal, I mean, you can see it's got plenty of get up and go, but it definitely doesn't have that Model X throw you back in the seat horsepower or torque that you're probably used to. If you've ever been in a Rivian, the R1T, for example, that thing goes to 60 in three seconds. The Tesla Model X goes to 60 in under three seconds, especially the Plaid versions, like my P100D does it in 2.9 seconds. It's unbelievably fast, makes you sick even. Go. Oh my God, this car just absolutely always shocks me with how fast it is. Unbelievable. Do you need to do that? Absolutely not. But for $90,000, it's fun to have that feature. And since the Rivian is $90,000, especially the comparable you know, SUV they've got, the R1S, that might be a value proposition you definitely want to look into if you can get one. The good part about these is you can actually get one today, no markup. Of course, those Rivians are still going over MSRP to this day just because they're so popular and they have so many desirable features. But we're cooking through some of these back roads here and this thing is just eating it up. So there's no doubt about it. When you're in dynamic mode, which we are right now, it's a fun car, it's still quiet, 
you, you're gonna enjoy driving it, whether you're doing city driving or you're gonna be on a back road like this. It's just something about these electric cars, they're just a lot of fun to drive because there's so much punch when you do give it the beans like that. You can come out of turns and just really floor it. It's quiet, instant torque. You know, in a lot of ways, this is still better than the internal combustion engine cars. And that's why they're becoming so darn popular. Uh, that plus you just don't actually pollute the air. Of course, I know all my commenters will tell me that uh, the EVs still require a lot of materials and you know, it's not all positive and where's your electricity come from, etc. I get it. Uh, but if we can transition to a sun-based re renewable economy, which we're getting closer and closer to every day, obviously this is going to be the way to go. You can take energy from the sun, put it into your battery packs. That's full sustainability. And assisted driving, okay? So I've pushed the set button here on the bottom left control and it is in self-driving mode. Now you can see here, it's coming up with a little yellow icon telling me to jerk the wheel. All you have to do is give it a little kind of tug. Tesla does this as well. Rivian, all of them do this it's built in as a safety feature to make sure you're still paying attention. I will tell you that's gonna come up a little bit more often than on other manufacturers. And it's not quite as good as the Tesla. So navigating this turn, it's more reactive than being proactive. So on the highway, it works great, unless that highway is very you know windy. Uh, on the way over here, I was using it quite a bit. And a couple of times I felt like I wanted to take over it was able to navigate it, but it didn't leave me in a state of confidence. This one on this back road here, like right there, it was a little sketchy. So Audi is not quite as good as some of the other manufacturers out there. Uh, I thought the Kia EV6 we reviewed was really good at self-driving. I thought obviously Tesla's still the leader in that. If you're looking for full self-driving, if you're looking to, for a car that's just gonna drive you to your destination and, and back with no self, uh, you know, I mean, Tesla can't do it yet, but they're definitely the closest one. This car is never gonna be able to do that. But you can see here, even on a pretty darn windy road, it, I mean, I've, I've touched the wheel just to jerk it, but it's been driving no problem. So you can enjoy the benefits of this on the highway, of course, but also on a back B road like this which is a really nice feature. It's one of the main reasons why you're gonna to wanna to upgrade from you know, a five or 10 year old internal combustion car is to get these self-driving features, which once you're used to them and once you have a degree of comfort using them, they're really, really hard to go back from. You know, I would have a hard time going back on my Tesla to anything but this. So this right here is a pretty steep turn. Okay, see, it couldn't it couldn't navigate that turn. Yeah, I wanted to share some of the, the different screens that you have. I mean, look at that big old front screen. Now, if you get a Tesla Model Y or even some of these other manufacturers, they're not really giving you a lot of these screens up here. Audi obviously does. And look at it, you have a nice, cool Google Earth map. It's really vibrant, colorful, looks great, high quality. One of the things I did want to mention, and I want to make sure I get it in the review, is when you are charging these screens do not currently allow you to play videos. So one of the things I really like about Tesla is when you are charging, you can go ahead and turn on Disney Plus, you can turn on Netflix and it plays right through the screen. That's actually a feature that we use a lot on our road trips. Unfortunately, this car doesn't have the capability of doing that. And again, I think that's kind of a miss. Audi, you have a very nice large screen here. Yes, it's not as big as Tesla, but you should be able to play a little bit of Netflix when you're spending 30, 45 minutes at a charger. So again, another thing that is probably a zonk on this car, would it deter me from buying it? No, it would have been just nice if you had that capability. Now, I don't know if you could see here, but when you are adjusting the drive modes like i just went to comfort it does raise up the vehicle so this does have air suspension so based on your driving mode you can have the ability here to you know obviously raise and lower the vehicle now individual mode allows you to set the drive to sport efficient the suspension to comfort the steering to comfort or sport or balance right now it's in balance mode that's basically what auto is 
You know, you can't see it during the day and it's unfortunate, but one of the things I really like about the interior of this car is you have all of these light bars that go across and you can change, I think up to like 60 plus different light combinations. You really unfortunately can't see it during the day, but at night this cockpit lights up really well. Uh, check out some of the images on Audi's website that show that, because uh, it's definitely a nice selling feature of this vehicle. Now we are at a stoplight here. This car does have automatic hold. As you can see, I'm not putting my foot on the brake at all. You can turn that off if you'd like. It's in the settings here. It's called hold assist. You just hit that and then it'll go ahead and just give you coast all the time. Although I have to say, it's a nice feature to have. This also does have a trailer hitch as well. If you're interested to know, you can tow 4,000 pounds with this vehicle. Not sure that you would tow 4,000 pounds very often with an EV SUV. You are gonna kill your range a little bit more even than gas. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have the ability to do that. So if you have to like tow a lawnmower or something to a service center, you have, you have the ability to do that, which is nice. Well guys, if you made it this far into the video, sincerely appreciate you watching. This is gonna be my conclusion and kind of summing up this car. Now, I hope you enjoyed our point of view drive. You got to see this thing auto drive. Is it as advanced as Tesla? It's really not. It's never gonna have full self-driving. This is maybe level two automation. Uh, but overall, it definitely is gonna get you to A to B, your long highway trips. You're gonna have no problem autopiloting with this car. So that's a really nice feature to have. And if your old internal combustion engine doesn't feature that, that's gonna be a really nice thing. And that's gonna be one of the main reasons why you're probably going to upgrade now overall power wise this thing has 490 foot pounds of torque in sport mode for the most part it's probably got a little over 400 foot pounds of torque is it a fast car well yes from the point of view that it has that instant acceleration but it's not a sports car it doesn't drive like a sports car it drives like a good everyday suv comfortable now with this new refresh they actually kind of made the steering angle a little bit tighter so a little, little easier to park and over Overall, I think you're gonna find that it's just easy and comfortable and simple to drive. You're gonna love it as a daily driver. Now, range, 285 miles. Reality is it's 285 miles on 100% charge. Now, Audi or any manufacturer, frankly, is gonna recommend you charge between 80 to 90% at most for your daily commute. So really, you're probably gonna have more like a 250 to 260 actual range. If you're gonna be taking a lot of road trips, you're probably gonna wanna stick away from a fully EV vehicle for a little bit longer. You may want to go and get a hybrid so that when the power is dead from the plug-in hybrid, you can still go to the internal combustion engine. However, if you're just going to be doing what I do, which is driving between 50 and 100 miles a day, my Tesla's fine. You got more than enough range to take some decent road trips, right? But in the end of the day, if you're not doing it very often, this is still a great option. You don't have to pay $4 gas, right, for a premium. And in the end of the day, you know, you, you just, you're not polluting, right? It's quiet. It's refined. There's just so many positives to driving an EV. When you, when you get, get in and drive one, you'll see it's just instant torque. They're sporty. They're fun. They're quiet. There's definitely a lot of positives. So overall, I like it. Would I spend $90,000? You know, I'm going to leave it up to you. When I was at Audi of Nashville, uh, downtown Audi, big shout out to them for letting me review this car. They were saying they have some really good lease specials on this car, which allow you to benefit from the EV tax credit of $7,500, or that's something that Audi has been doing for their company. Customers. <clears throat> now, while this doesn't qualify for the EV tax credit, it sounds like they have a creative way of getting you that EV credit. Now, this is also a pretty heavy vehicle, right? So this is a gross weight of about 7,600 pounds. So I believe, and talk to your CPA, you should have no problem writing this car off to your business as a depreciable asset. Uh, otherwise, it does weigh about 5,700 pounds. So definitely a heavy vehicle. But to sum it all up, I like it. I like the look of it. I like the interior quality of it. Is it better than the Tesla? You know, I gotta be honest, I still think Tesla has got the nod when it comes to the self-driving. However, the interior quality and the look factor, if you're not a fan of Tesla, there's a lot of things that this thing actually, I think, wins on. That's just the reality. Uh, but overall, guys, I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a like, drop us a comment below. Who knows if this thing's gonna get any views or not. Some of my videos do, some of them don't, just depends on that old algo, but it sure helps when you engage with the content. Sincerely appreciate you watching though, and that is it for us. We'll see you on the next one.